What's going on YouTube? So the last few years at Kia have been dominated by the new Seltos, new EV6, and of course the new Telluride. But it was only a matter of time before Kia's longest running nameplate stepped back into the limelight. And boy has it. This is the all new 2023 Kia Sportage which is here with a bolder design than ever before, as well as setting a new standard in terms of technology, size, and even off-road capability. But without wasting any time, let's go ahead and take an in-depth look and test drive of this all-new Sportage and see if this is the compact SUV you should buy. Okay, so just like in every other video, we gotta start out with the exterior. And this, of course, is one of the boldest elements of this new Sportage. It really stands out in this segment with a super aggressive design that also looks nothing like, really, most of the other Kias in the lineup. Now, uh, we do have very limited time with this vehicle today. Um, so I'm gonna focus on the X-Line, which is what this specific trim level is. However, there are a ton of different trim levels this is gonna be offered in, seven trim levels total. And we look forward to sampling out all of those trim levels uh, very soon um, in the future. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe down below. But as far as what this one specifically looks like, and most of them will keep most of these elements as well, you have a kind of tiger nose grill, but not really. It does have some of the elements to it, like this general shape. But as you can see, it's much wider. This dominates the entire front end and comes all the way out to the headlights. Furthermore, uh, with this, you do have basically your regular trim levels and then you have some off-road focused trim levels or more rugged design, I should say. This being the X-Line does have the more squared off lower fascia here, which gives it a little bit of a tougher stance from the other trim levels. But perhaps even more distinctive than this front end design are these right here. These headlights are super bold, have an incredibly unique design. And uh, as far as what you're gonna get, so these are full LED across all of the trim levels. However, if you go to the very top end prestige models, that would be the SX Prestige or the X-Pro Prestige, both of those would throw in uh, projector LED headlights instead. The turn signal on this model is gonna be incandescent, but every single model, including the base model, come with these really awesome looking daytime running lights that come all the way up from the hood down to here and give it that distinct design. Furthermore, uh, some of your higher end trim levels will come with fog lamps. And you do have 8.3 inches of ground clearance with all the all wheel drive models, which is gonna be up quite a bit from the outgoing generation. Now, just like with anything in this segment, and considering how many trim levels it has, you do have a ton of different wheel choices. I'm happy to say that this example we have today actually has the largest wheel option that you can get. So shared with the SX Prestige and the X-Line, these both have 19 inch contrast alloys. And I have to say these look phenomenal on this SUV. Really stands out and I love how it contrasts with the white paint that we have. And like I said, of course, you do have various other 17 and 18 inch wheel options, depending on which trim level you select. As we come up to the mirrors, you'll notice that we do have heating and blind spot monitoring included on all but the base LX trim level. Furthermore, if you choose any of the X trim levels, those are going to throw in the gloss black mirror caps. All right, guys, so let's talk about the side of the Sportage. Now, this is something worth noting because Kia has really made this Sportage a lot larger than the previous generation model. We're coming in at 183.5 inches in length, which is up 7.1 inches over the previous model. And that does actually mean it leapfrogs the competition like the RAV4 CRV in terms of overall length. This is gonna make this a lot more spacious as you'll see on the inside. Now, I do wanna point out for this more rugged model, we do have the standing roof rails. You can also get more flush roof rails if you go for one of the more stylish trim levels. And then we do have the black window surrounds as well as this little design element here that has a little diamond design. I really like the way that that looks. Now, coming around to the rear design, 
for the Sportage. You will notice pretty similar elements to what you get on the Kia EV6 as far as just the overall design looks, which I'm very happy to see because I think it's a very classy and elegant overall look. Now, I do want to point out, as far as the tail lights are concerned, we have this full length design. Like I said, similar to what you see on the EV6, it is going to be nice LED accented. However, for the lower models, I do want to point out that your brake light as well as your turn signal will be incandescent. You can get them LED if you go for a higher end trim level. We have our big Kia branding here in the middle. And then if we drop down to the lower area, you will notice that we do have all of this in the rugged matte black plastic. We have a maximum tow rating of 2,500 pounds, and you will notice that we do not have an exposed exhaust outlet. Now it's time to talk about your safety systems as well as your warranty information. So Kia is throwing in the vast majority of your safety systems as standard equipment. So that's going to be forward emergency braking, lane keeping assist, and auto high beam headlamps. Those are standard on every single model. However, you will have to go to the SX or X Pro trims to get adaptive cruise control as standard. And furthermore, if you go for prestige, that will add rear auto braking. Now, as far as your warranty is concerned, you will continue to have Kia's best in the business warranty, five year, 60,000 mile basic warranty, 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain, no complimentary maintenance. Now it's time to check out the interior before we take this new Sportage out in a spin. All right, guys, it's time to go into the interior of this all new Sportage where there's a lot of interesting things going on. I'll start off by quickly showing you guys the key fob. Here it is. This is the typical Kia key fob you've seen over the last couple of years. We do have the intelligent entry system and remote start on all but the base model, so that's really nice. Take a look inside of there. Really cool and futuristic cabin design. And as you know, if you follow our channel, we recently sampled the Kia EV6, and I'm really excited to see some of those things actually come onto this Sportage model. And this, of course, is a lot more affordable and mainstream than that product. All right, let's talk about a few of the details. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the seats. Like I said, due to time constraints, I'm gonna focus on the X-Line. So we do have the premium leatherette seats on the X-Line model. And this is a kind of a tire tread pattern stitched into the seat. Really lovely looking. And I like that the bolsters are a little bit thicker than what I would expect as well. As far as the seats, these are gonna be eight way power adjusting on basically all but the base model. And of course you would get memory and stuff like that on the higher end examples. As far as the door trim, really nice and high quality. We've got the leatherette here, we've got the stitching. It is leatherette right above that as well. Soft touch all along the top. We have that new Kia door handle, which I really like. It's nice and sturdy. And we also have a faux wood trim with this model. And it looks like our front two windows are gonna be one touch automatic up and down. But let's go ahead and get inside. I'll let Mason kind of walk around and we'll hop in. Now that we're fully inside, of course, uh, we'll go and take a look quickly at some of our materials. Like I said, X-Line is kind of a middle trim. This is the first of the off-road oriented trim. So we do have a soft touch dashboard here with the stitching detail. As we come down, you've got some piano black accents, which nicely trace around these vents here. More of this faux wood that goes all the way across the dash. And I will say it does have that same realistic texture, just like in the Telluride. And then as we move down, we're gonna be using piano black as well as some hard touch plastic through here. Everything does fit together extremely solid. And the push button start is actually located right here in front of the shifter. And this is gonna be included on all but the base LX. Take a look at that. Right as soon as you start it up, you're gonna be greeted with this um, brand new display system. So a lot of the trim levels are gonna come with two 12.3 inch displays. This one actually doesn't because this is a lower end trim level. However, one of the cool things about it is even though you ha we have the more affordable one with the 4.2 inch multi-function display, that's actually just right there in the middle. But as you can see, it actually has the appearance like it's still the high end trim level. It's uh, very interesting in that regard because this right here is still graphics that are inside of a uh, kind of display. So it has that effect of having this seamless curved look even on your lower end models. But like I said, when you have the full 12.3, it has that nice seamless curve right through there. Um, let's come back to the steering wheel here. As you can see, nice leather wrap. This is the newest Kia design and we have all the buttons located right there. We do have rain sensing wipers on this model, which I think is nice for this price point. And of course the wheel itself is gonna be manual tilt and telescoping. Heating is available on most of the trim levels. 
but we'll continue this quick tour around by taking a look here at our storage. So as we can see, the center console here, pretty nicely sized, um, plenty of space, does have a felt lining down here at the bottom. I can tell by this amount of space that this would definitely fit our coupons in there when we test that out fully. But then what I really like is this very flexible storage area right here. As you can see, you have all the space. Kia has pointed out you can actually lay an iPad through here, so that's very versatile. And the cool trick is when you press this button, check that out, I just made my two cup holders. So you can have the cup holders when you need them, you can put them away when you don't. Up in front of that though, we have another large area. This is great for holding your cell phone in place. And of course, this is a ventilated wireless phone charging pad down here at the bottom. Again, on most of the trim levels, we do have a new USB Type-C in addition to a regular USB and a 12 volt outlet. Now, as we come back to the shifter, the uh, regular models, which are the ones that are the first ones coming to dealerships, these are going to have the traditional T shifter. Uh, I believe the hybrid and the plug-in hybrids are going to have the rotary electronic shifter in the future. Of course, you can shift manually here. This specific model does not have paddle shifters. And then when we head into reverse, this model will also have the traditional backup camera. As you can see, we do have active trajectory. And we have the visualization of the parking sensors, which is a point I wanted to make because Kia actually includes the parking sensors, uh, rear parking sensors, standard on all the models. And you can get the 360 camera when you choose the prestige models of either the X Pro or the SX. Back behind the shifter, you've got some of your controls for the all-wheel drive system. Uh, and over here is where you'll find your seat controls. So all everything above the EX trim level, excuse me, will come with three stage heated seats. Um, if you want seat ventilation, you're gonna have to choose one of the prestige models. And then let's go ahead and talk about the climate controls because this is a very interesting element. So this has the cool trick, just like with the EV6, you can change between audio and climate. So you'll notice we're in climate right now. I can do this right here, change my temperature on both sides with this control. But if I press that, Bam, it turns into audio controls, and now suddenly this is turning up and down my audio. So really cool the use of space, which I really appreciate. But like I said, standard dual zone automatic, and everything operates very nicely. Even though these are touch sensitive, they're very responsive buttons. Now as we come above, uh, we come to our main 12.3 inch infotainment display. Um, this is pretty much your typical Kia affair. I will say the screen feels actually a lot more responsive than some of the uh, past models actually, and the resolution does appear to be quite upgraded with this model, so I'm definitely liking that. But in terms of the software, that is going to be the same. Uh, the LX does come with a seven, uh, an eight inch display, excuse me, instead. Um, that model is gonna have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Every other trim level, which comes with a larger display, will have navigation, but it will have wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay instead. Up above, we do have a manual dim mirror on this one. You can, of course, get the auto dimming with the Homelink Universal Remotes, as you would expect. And then take a look up here at this. We have the beautiful full panoramic sunroof. This is actually not standard on the X-Line. It's included on your top four trim levels, um, but we do have it via the optional premium package on the X-Line. All right, guys, I'm in the rear seat of the Sportage. Now, this, is, of course, is a family vehicle, so this is a very important aspect. And Kia is happy to point out this is one of the largest offerings in the entire segment. Now, as you can probably tell by the amount of legroom I have, that extra 7.1 inches on the outside is going to basically go to a lot more space in this rear area. We're looking at 41.3 inches of legroom, a little over 39 inches of headroom, and behind the seating position, I'm looking at... I mean, holy crap, guys, it's almost a foot of space between my knees and the seat back and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. So very, very impressed with the amount of space. As you can see, the seats do recline. This one right over here is fully reclined down. So you're going to have a lot of comfort in the Sportage rear area. Now, as far as the features are concerned, let's point this out. We have two USB ports in the back of each seat back. These are, these are the type C variety. If we drop down, we do have some vents integrated in. That's a nice touch. And then we do have this little storage cubby right here. Now, I don't have full information about all the trim levels as we've talked about throughout this review. This is very early. Uh, maybe that would be filled with some other feature I don't know about. I don't believe heated rear seats are offered though, so uh, correct me in the comments down below if it's later and you know that information. And there is a very important feature I don't want to miss. You see this right here? We got some really cool headrests. These are actually made to be coat hooks so you can hang your clothes right here instead of just using the thing at the roof. 
All right, guys, let's talk about the cargo capacity. That's also a very important part about any family vehicle. Now, we do have an optional power tailgate for this X-Line model. It will be standard on the higher-end models. It is also hands-free. Now, as far as the space itself, though, that's the, really, the thing I really want to point out because that extra 7.1 inches doesn't just end in the second row. It also translates to this back area as well. This is class-leading cargo capacity. Uh, we're looking at 39 cubic feet behind the second row seats. If you fold the seats down, you're looking at 74.1 cubic feet of cargo capacity. That is a ton of space, guys, for the segment. Um, like I mentioned, it really best the vast majority of the segment. I do believe it's right up there with the highest ones in the entire segment. Now, let's talk about the finishings. As you can see, we can fold the seats 60-40 split, so we can just use these little levers right here. That folds it down, gives you that full 74 cubic feet of maximum cargo capacity. As you can see, we have all of our camera gear back here. It fits back here perfectly fine. Then if we lift up the floor, you will find a spare tire. Now your passenger seat is going to be manually adjusting for this model, and then if we pop open the glove box, uh, you do have a good amount of space. This is similar to what you get in a Hyundai Tucson, so you can definitely fit in all of the coupons. Um, we just don't have them with us right now since we're on that limited time frame. And then up top, we do have a sun visor that does have a large mirror inside. We also have detached lighting. And then if we close it up, we can detach it out as well as extend it. So there was a quick acceleration with this 2023 <laughs> Sportage. Obviously the red light kind of spoiled us just a little bit. Um, but in terms of the power, let's go ahead and talk about that. So what we have on board is the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. It is a new engine um, and it's making 187 horsepower, 178 pound feet of torque. Those are, you know, numbers right in the heart of the segment. Uh, Typically, rivals are going to range right in there between like 175 and 200. So we just kind of set right there in the middle. And power does feel pretty good. But Kia is offering several different powertrain combinations with this uh, Sportage. Now, of course, the one today, we're just focusing on this naturally aspirated model. However, there will be a hybrid available later this year, as well as a plug-in hybrid. Um, so there's going to be a few different powertrain options depending on what your heart desires if you're looking for fuel economy or just a regular a to b transportation like this one exactly and like we said we look forward to testing out all the different versions coming up soon yeah like we said power does feel pretty nice uh you know, some of the different rivals, they come with a continuously variable transmission. But I am happy to say, we've got an eight-speed automatic transmission on board with this yeah. new Sportage, as you can probably tell. Um, and, you know, one of the benefits of that, like we were saying with the power, is having that power delivery. You know, when you have that traditional automatic, uh, it just has that sensation that people are usually um, prefer, where you don't have to wait, you don't have the rubber bandiness feel to it you have that power that comes on immediately and this is a very nice performing transmission yeah that's certainly a benefit for going for this now as far as your drive trains it is going to be available in front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive so for this standard motor we're looking at a rating of 25 32 28 combined for the front wheel drive version and then for all wheel drive you're looking at 25 miles a gallon combined um, that is pretty competitive fuel economy numbers, but you will notice that that is a little bit less than what you get with the uh, Honda CRV and some of those CRV or the uh, CVT competitors because those are more fuel economy minded. Now, of course, there is the hybrid and the plug in hybrid that will get you better fuel economy if that's something you're really interested in. And I do want to mention our ride quality. Now, of course, we're not going full highway speed. We're going to be on a little bit more of an abbreviated loop today due to our time uh, constraints. But I do want to just mention the ride quality of this Sportage. We spent more significant time with the Hyundai Tucson, which is, of course, uh, something it shares a platform with. And 
this is, of course, a really good riding vehicle. It's family focused. It soaks up the bumps really well. It's very quiet. Um, I really don't see that you would have any complaints at all in terms of the ride quality for this Sportage or the noise level. In right, and this specific cabin. one has the larger wheels as well. Yeah. So it's really handling that um, nicely. And we are in Kentucky after all, so it's time for our air ball and slam dunk in the Sportage. Um, so for our slam dunk, I think that really just has to be um, the value and the overall package that they've thrown in this year for the price. Um, this is of course a ground up redesign. There's a lot of different things that I could have slam dunked, but overall when you factor in the price, it's very spacious. It has a lot of new technology, a lot of innovative features like the headrests, you know, hangers. It just has a lot of really cool stuff that is uncommon in the segment that we certainly appreciate. And on the airball side of things, this doesn't necessarily reflect my personal opinion, but I, I would say that it's going to be the design, specifically the design of the front end, because when you show people pictures of this, I'm getting some mixed responses. So I, I get the impression that this is definitely going to be controversial. <laughs> I can feel that as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's just going to be up to your personal taste. I will say, you know, once you see it in person, it is going to look different now that we've seen it in person versus the pictures. You know, it just does gives you a little bit of a different feel out here in the natural sunlight and stuff, but it's going to be up to each person to make that judgment on their own. Yeah. Now, we are very early on this review, so we actually do not have full pricing for this 2023 Sportage and across the lineup. Which we will add to the description once it's Kia releases it, it should be pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, but that said, we do have the sticker price for this one because we do have a sticker on it. This one with the premium package is coming in a hair over $34,000. So um, this is, of course, probably going to be a pretty popular combo for this model, I would assume, because you're looking at that mid $30,000 price point, and um, you are getting a lot with this trim level. And I will also say that we don't anticipate that the prices are going to change very much from 2022. Um, of course, you know, Kia has a lot of different crossovers in the lineup. So this is fitting between the Seltos and the Sorento. So that kind of price window, you have a limited area, let's just say. Yeah. So it can't really increase substantially and it's a very competitive segment. So we should be looking at prices that stay roughly the same as the 2022 model. And that right there is our auto start stop system at work. I will say really, really smooth. Yeah. I have to commend them. I mean, that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, different brands, some do it better and some do it worse. Uh, that was definitely one of the smoother things I felt in this segment. But overall, you know, here on our short drive with this uh, Kia Sportage, I have to say, very impressed. I expected to be impressed because like Mason said, we're, we're talking about a common platform between the Sorento, the related Hyundai Tucson. These are all very competitive, very strong SUVs that we love a lot. And, uh, you know, behind the wheel, there's really a lot to like with this Sportage. You've got all those strong characteristics, that new size that is so much larger, really nice, solid feel behind the wheel, good ride quality, nice and quiet in here as well. This really seems like a winner. Um, you know, I really anticipate that this is going to be a very, very popular product for Kia. Well guys, we really hope you enjoyed watching one of the first in-depth looks at the 2023 Kia Sportage X-Line. We really appreciate you making it this far in the video and if you would like to see more content on the Sportage, please subscribe to our channel. We will have even more content coming soon and we pride ourselves in being as quick as possible in getting content. So if you wanna know the latest automotive news, please hit that subscribe button down below. Also follow us on TikTok and Instagram, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.